The North. Known for its industry, hard-working and innovative people, we are the engineers of the past and always look for solutions for the future. Our Creative North wants to celebrate that and show the world what we can do. Hi and welcome to Our Creative North, the only show that celebrates the creative and digital media sector right here in the north of England. On today's show, we send Jordan, our pioneer, over to Greenland Primary where he meets Lee from Custom Artwork. Then, after the break, we head over to Fluid Pixel, a mobile design agency. But first, over to Jordan. So once again, we go on to the creative breach and we take Jordan Bird from Newcastle to Greenland Primary School to meet Lee Ferry to do some murals. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm an apprentice at Creative North. I'm Lee Ferry. I'm an artist and my business is Custom Artwork. When I was younger, I really enjoyed art. I've drifted away a bit, but art's still there. Lee Ferry does all sorts of public art. He's done work all around Newcastle and even painted the Newcastle United Football Club gates. So Lee, how did you get the job at this place? Well, the school's relatively new. It was only built two years ago or something, and uh, what happened was all the walls were painted red, as you can see by the ones I haven't started. Um, and it's, it's not really a very good colour for, for children to be playing around, really. It's, in my opinion, it's an aggressive colour. So the scenario was to change it to something that would uh, suit the environment, you know? Something yeah. to <clears throat> just kick the imagination in a bit instead of uh, just running around. Fair enough, they've got lots of stuff to play with, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, without Bonnie Pitches in the world, there's nothing, you know? So, so basically, this is the one I'm working on at the moment. As you can see, it's... Uh, it's space themed, you know, to go in with the, the way the education is for uh, this side's key stage too. The project uh, we've done today is uh, key stage two area, Greenland Primary School. Basically, the whole idea is just to take the plainness off the place, you know, add a bit of colour to some rather drab walls. The way it works is you, you tr try and go along with the curriculum, you know, something that's that they've been taught in school, so when they're outside school, it's still fresh in their minds, you know? And it just brightens the place up, you know, which is what art's about. When it started, it, it, it was a hobby, really, you know? It was something I did in my spare time. Um, but over the years, you learn to make money from it, you know? And if you can make money from a hobby, it's the perfect job. Um, of course. I mean, I, I did spend a, a lot of time in an industry doing exactly well, not exactly, very similar stuff, but uh, nothing like this. It was, it was just uh, the odd bit of sign writing here and there and everywhere and characters on bouncy castles and play areas and things like that. But uh, I sort of fell out of love with, with the industry and, and this totally happened by mistake. Somebody asked us to do a mural on a, a children's bedroom wall and then somebody else asked us to do a mural on their kid's bedroom wall and it got to the point where every other day that I wasn't doing something entirely different to this. I was doing murals on children's walls and then uh, I got an offer from a school in Gateshead to do some sign writing on the wall. Went down, quoted for it, and uh, it just spiralled out of control from there on, you know. As I can see, you obviously love what you do. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what, do you think there's anything that would make what you do better? Good weather, <laughs> especially when you're working outside. I mean, usually 99% of the time I'm indoors. That's good. I mean, you'd, whether it be swimming pools, bedrooms, kitchens, bathrooms, you know. So most of the time you haven't got to worry about the weather. But uh, if it's the only one thing I would change, or, or the ability to fly, the ability to levitate and paint high walls would be really good. But uh, no, I, I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm just lucky to be able to do something I like for a job, I think, you know. Yeah. So do you fancy creating something like this then? Well, from a young age, I've just liked sketching, like landscapes, buildings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I've, and I sometimes rarely like draw cartoons and stuff like that, but I've never never done painting or anything mm -hmm. like that before. So I just use pencils or crayon and right. stuff like that. Well, everybody starts somewhere. I mean, uh, it was pencils and crayon for me, basically, you know, but uh, I'm quite happy to give you a paintbrush and uh, set you on the path, oh, you know. Cool, but yeah, uh, yeah it's it's... It's a, it's a nice thing to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how are we? So even though it totally looks finished, 
Jordan is probably going to go in and spoil it all so Lee Ferry has more money to charge. Only joking. Right, okay then, so what we're going to do? Well, here we are, tools of the trade, all paint, brush. Um, we're just about finished, actually, so I'll get you to block the last bit in. You can take all the credit for it. <laughs> it's just a matter of blocking it in, building it up in layers, so you get the desired effect. It's what's called dry brushing. So basically, use a brush until there's no paint left on it. A nice textured effect instead of it just being flat blocked cut. So. There you go, you'll get all the credit for it by blocking this bit in here, and that's the job done. All right, not being on. Yeah, that's doesn't matter how much paint you put on as long as you work it into the wall properly. No, I've painted before, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Well, most of the most famous artists in the world couldn't put paint on stuff. Basically, all I need is uh, for people to look at the work and go, yep, yeah, very nice, and as far as somebody saying, yep, yeah, very nice, then I can guarantee I'm going to get another job from it. The way it works is uh, I do one job, I get another job, I get another job, and in the meantime, I'll learn a lot. Uh, especially with the school system, when I started in the school system, the amount I've learned just about the subjects I've painted. I probably learned more out of school than what I did when I was in school. To walk away from a full-time job to go to being self-employed was probably the biggest decision of my life. And it wasn't the easiest decision of my life, but certainly the best decision of my life. It's not as easy as people think to get into, maybe. Um, Lee's obviously worked really hard to get where he is at the minute. And it's as he said, he started from the bottom and to work his way up to where he is now. So is that what's done here? That's Should it. We'll go around yeah. and see your, your other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you the ground tour. Space, the final frontier. It is pretty impressive. So this is where it all started, really. Well, here in Greenland, anyway. Um, it's about a year ago. Just over a year ago, we uh, went ahead and did these ones on. By the looks of things, this one's probably the most popular. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> the idea behind it is just basically it was just to, to totally change the look of the playground, you know, to give the kids something to, to inspire them, you know, it's, instead of it just being a playing wall, actually, to, to give them something to, to generate a bit of imagination, you know. Yeah, and, and the theme? The theme, it, it basically, we were open to anything, you know, just. Anything to take the redness away from the walls. Um, it's it's basically it's a generic fairy tale theme, mm -hmm. you know. Nothing in there that blatantly screams anything, you know. But yeah. uh, I mean, they, they get as, as far as I can gather, they get the kids to write stories about what they think it is, you know. Oh right, yeah. And it's a great idea. Art's something I've always done ever since school. It runs in the family. It became like who I am, basically. So walk us through the wall and where the different well, parts are. Well, <laughs> um, the thing was, when I, when I did this, the first thing I saw was the shark, yeah. you know? I thought, it's got to have a shark on it. Um, everything else is to sort of uh, cheer it up a bit, yeah. you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I was a little bit worried, sticking a big shark on a wall where there's lots of children, but <laughs> uh, you've got an array of fish on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably something for everybody. So how did you come up with the idea um, of the creation and the process of um, designing these walls? Well, I'm a, the way it's done is, it's no good me just coming down here and deciding what I want to put on the wall. You yeah. know, it's, it's gotta be something that's in theme with whatever the kids are learning or whatever they're, whatever they're gonna be learning. Mm -hmm. You do your homework, basically. You, know, you, you find out what the situation is. You go with something that's bright, colourful, you know? Yeah. Something that they're going to learn about, but not something too intrusive. Mm -hmm. um, you come up with a, a couple of ideas. I mean, the way I do things is, I come down and I look at the wall. Most of the time I know what's going to be on the wall before I've even walked out of the place. But uh, such as this, you, you go home, you come up with ideas, you bring them in, you show the kids, you find out which ones the kids like, yeah. you know? 
and then you just adapt around that. There's nothing difficult about it, it's, it's just you've got to do your homework and you, you do whatever the customer wants and that's the same with every job. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see how Lee is using his art to provide dynamic images for Greenland Primary. Coming up after the break, we head over to Fluid Pixel. We'll see you then. And the business of the week this week is Fluid Pixel, based in Newcastle. Hi, my name's Stuart Varrell and I'm director of Fluid Pixel. I studied at Teesside University and did a computer animation degree and masters. Uh, during that time I spent a year at Ubisoft um, in Newcastle and worked uh, making console video games. And based on that experience I realised that I really loved making games but didn't like working on massive projects. So I started up a company making mobile games. Hi, I'm Gary Slack. I work for Fluid Pixel as an artist. I went to Teesside University and studied digital character animation. Basically how I got to where I am. I'm Paul Jones and I'm a programmer for Fluid Pixel. I started out doing a master's course at Newcastle University uh, in computer game engineering. And part of that course was I had a dissertation. I did my dissertation in the industry here as, a, in, as an intern. And that turned into a job. Um, so now I'm full-time employed here. I've been running since August 2007, um, so yeah, over seven years now, and nearly eight years. And so back when the iPhone hadn't even been announced, and when Nokia ruled the roost of uh, mobile development, and so things have moved a long way in that short space of time. Only my company is really interesting. It's uh, pretty stressful at times, but also really satisfying and when you are working on projects. Um, that you've either created yourself or for clients. And it's really exciting to, you know, to wake up every day and know that you're in charge of your own destiny. We've, we've done quite a few um, projects. There was one in the journal recently about um, architectural visualization, um, where you can get a phone and you, it'll take a photograph and it'll visualize a building and stuff like that. One of the, the projects I worked on my dissertation is the bubble depicts. Um, which there's a rotating pod, and it takes photographs as, it, as the phone rotates in a in a pod, and it stitches them together to make a 360 degree panorama. Yeah, so eight years is a long time for a business. You know, most businesses fail within the first year, and then you know, a lot more fail within like two to four years. So the fact that we've been going for so long means we've had to overcome a lot of challenges. Um, the challenge up to move the company up to Newcastle, and even though it's not a long way away, we had to move all our uh, employees and everyone up with us and so that was a, a big change for both the company and me personally. There's been plenty of challenges but I'm always focused on the challenge that I'm trying to overcome right now. Once you've got over something there's a bit of a celebration and then you're working out how to get over the next challenge. There's, al there's always challenges especially when you're faced with like, things like bugs in programs and it's infuriating trying to find out what's going wrong. I've got quite fond of iOS and I'd like to be quite into programming iPhones and iPads and, and Mac as well. That's my kind of, that's my field which I want to get good in and stuff like that. So I'm from near London originally and I moved up to the North East uh, nearly 15 years ago and I'm really glad that I did. You know, I love the, the region I think it's got uh, great qualities as a place to live and a place to work. And Newcastle is a great city and it's a short distance from the coast, uh, it's got great universities around here so we have good access to, to new talent and yeah I just, I just love the area, I love living here and I can't see me living anywhere else. So the benefits of working for Fluid Pixel and being in Newcastle is uh, it's just e easy going, it's not too stressful. It's a lovely place Newcastle, it's great and I, I grew up in Whitney Bay, I um, moved to Newcastle um, a few years ago as well. Um, but it's lovely, I mean, the beach is 10 miles away. It's a nice city to live in. It's generally quite a um, relaxed city. It's great, it's, it's a really nice atmosphere, good place to work in. I don't really have like a, a five year life plan or anything like that, that some business you know, you're sort of advocated to, to do. I try and work more in the short term and then the next sort of three to six months and just seeing what's new because you just don't know what's around the corner. And virtual reality is a big thing at the moment, and so we're investing a lot of time and space into 
for that area. Um, but you know, I, I can't tell what's going to be happening in six months, and so you know, I don't have big, lofty goals to, to know what we're going to be doing in five years' time. Doing what you like is not really a job <laughs> so much. So I suppose that's kind of my creative drive, is just I enjoy drawing. Some fantastic apps designed by Stuart, Gareth and Paul there. So, without further ado, let's head back over to Lee and learn a bit about his business. And a recap, we sent Jordan Bird down to Greenland Primary School to meet Lee Ferry to do some public art. I'm Lee Ferry, I'm an artist and my business is custom artwork. When I left school, I got offered a job, basically painting pictures on bouncy castles, play areas, things like that. The industry I worked in changed massively. I grew bored with it, walked away from it. Spent three years in retail while I was trying to decide what to do with my life and uh, the art thing came back. 24 years was a long time to work for somebody else, but I just got so comfortable. But uh, all the years I was working for somebody else, everybody kept telling us I should be working for myself. And I, I ignored them, you know. But it's not until you work for yourself that you realise you're better off doing that than what you are working for somebody else. It is the perfect job. As far as I'm concerned, it is. I get paid for painting pictures on people's walls. Kids are told that you can't make a living from painting pictures, which is wrong, massively wrong. I mean, the, the creative subjects are just getting pushed further and further down. Well, originally, when I started the business, I thought, oh, brilliant, work three days a week doing commercial art, spend the rest of my week sitting in the house with an easel in front of us, doing art for art's sake. That went out the window within the first couple of weeks. I mean, I went from like one or two jobs a week to four or five jobs a week, depending on how big the job is. So really it, it's, a, it's a, something I would really like to be able to just sit back and just draw for drawing's sake. But unfortunately the business side of things sort of takes over. Because when you're self-employed, you can't turn work away. I know a lot of people say, oh, I can't draw to save my life, I can't draw a matchstick, man, this, that, and the other. Plenty of artists made money out of drawing matchstick, man. Don't hesitate, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. If you can draw, you can do what I do for a living. I was uh, asked to court for a job at uh, an academy in Gateshead. I went down there and uh, they just wanted a bit of sign writing putting on the wall. And while I was down there, I was approached by a science teacher. And uh, he asked us if I'd be interested in doing a, a mural on the science block wall asked what they wanted on the wall, and they just went, anything science. So I went home, uh, looked up science, you know. But the, the strange thing is, uh, trying to mix art and a, another subject, is you don't realise how much art's involved in every other subject. There's a, uh, I've got the science department, I've got the library done, I've got the maths department. Um, I'm back down there doing business, health and travel in the summer holidays, and it, Basically, the whole school has just turned into my private gallery. I don't particularly look at my business as a business. I look at it as me painting, you know? But I, I try to run my business as, as a hobby, you know? The, com the commercial side of it is, is the worst side of it, I would say, you know? Because you're torn to, to do what other people want you to do. That's the only problem about doing art as a business. You basically, you're not expressing yourself. What you're doing is you're expressing what the customer wants. Yeah, I've, I've got free reign of how it looks, but I've got to take into consideration what the other person wants. My business, it's been running two years now, but I would say a year in advance of that, I was building up a portfolio, you know? Because you're nothing without a portfolio. Anybody can say, I can, I'll paint that on your wall, I'll paint that on your wall, but unless you've got a track record that you can actually paint that on your wall, then you could be anybody. I'm nowhere near the level I would love to be at. And I turned away a job the other day because it was just, it was beyond what I could do at this moment in time. But next year could be a different matter altogether. It looks like I'll, I'll probably have to keep the, the drone for drone's sake bit until I've made enough money to retire and then I can go and sit with my feet up in Durham Cathedral with a sketch pad. At the minute, um, I'm quite happy to to, to work every day. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Every day, every day is something new. You know, I, I don't do the same job twice, never. 
never ever do the same job twice. That's the brilliant thing about my job. So there we have it, another great episode of Our Creative North. If you've been inspired by anything you've seen on today's show, have a look at our website, get in contact, and we'll see you next time.